Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the European version of the World Championship Series 2014. Our Group D matches are underway here in the round of 16. Apollo is back with me. How you doing? Hello, sir. How you doing? Oh, how you doing? Oh, how you doing? How you doing? Uh, good. Um, game one, then. Bit cheeky from the MC. I think that might stand for much cheekiness uh, mm. for MC, because he was a bit cheeky in that game one, didn't he? He lost first one. Were you worried about for him? I mean, you Very know, for worried. For him after, after game one. one. Yeah. And then that engage in the second map. Oh, although... MC pulled a bit of the GSL Championship winner magic out in game number two to be able to pull that one back. But after game number one, knowing the two maps, Altazim and Frost, that I think do favor Nurture against MC there, thought he could be losing that first series. Yeah, and then uh, moved on to heavy rain, and we were kind of like, mm, this yeah. is going to be tough for Nurture now. But he played really well. I mean, he, it's a scary game for either of these next two players to think about on either side of the bracket. Yeah, definitely. Um, Nurcho just came in today's group. Probably a lot of people just like, yeah, whatever, man. I don't think you're going to do very well today. And Nurcho was like, yeah, well, I remember I was still top eight in season three last season. So definitely, definitely scary. Yeah, and the funniest thing is, is we wouldn't talk about it too much before the pregame, but actually his ZVP stats are pretty decent. He's top 10 in the world right now, so it's not like he's a slouch there. Yeah, I mean, his Mule's Crypto style is very difficult to play against. The one weakness he has is what Tilo has, is that he refuses to use Swarm Host, which does make him a little bit predictable. Yeah. I like him for that, though. <laughs> stays, so do stays so in my many other people. <laughs> uh, okay, let's move on. I'll show you the bracket just to confirm the uh, MC victory uh, and his road up to the gold position at the top half of the bracket. He's one game away from making the round of eight for the third consecutive season. Who does he play? That's the question we're going to answer very shortly. San or Bling? Uh, let's start with Bling. Home home favourite for us. It's oh, yes. very, very good for us to have a British player finally in the round of 16. I mean, just, you know, it's great anyway, because we're a European region. We don't see all of the Euro European countries. I mean, Starbucks, for instance, last year having coming in as well. That was great. It's great to have good representation from the entire part of Europe. But not only that, Bling's a, he's a bit of a character as well. He's a great personality. Um, he's a fun character. He's very lovable. Um, and he's just a cool guy, very simply. The one big problem is I've known him from, from actually the beginning of his StarCraft II career. We were in Dignitas at the same time, actually. Um, we used to play together and practice together in like 2010, so a very, very long time ago. He's always had nerve problems, um, really badly nerve problems, especially when something starts to become realistic for him, then it hits him hard. And that's the thing that he didn't have in the round of 32, being in a group with Happy and Stardust. Happy's meant to be the best Terran in Europe, and Stardust is Stardust. And so he went into that group saying, you know what, I can't really advance, so I'm just going to give up my best and see what happens. And with that kind of no worry attitude, he advanced. Do you think he can carry that on here, though? Because, I mean, he, he's got that kind of outward confidence. I know he gets nervous, but he, he's got the confidence, and we know he's got the skills. So does he just turn up here and go, yeah, everyone's going to look at me. I'm, I'm the weakest player in the, in the, in the group. Nobody's given me, me a chance, so actually I'm just going to bust out some cool moves. In, in my completely biased opinion, I want him to be <laughs> like that. But I know he won't be, because once he's here on that stage playing, everything just becomes realistic. He's here. He's in the top 16. And if he advances today, he's top eight. Like, that's massive. And when you start to think about that for a player like him, this is absolutely his biggest result in StarCraft II ever. Just the prestige of the World Championship Series and being here, it will become realistic being there. And that's where I think he'll get hit by nerves. Okay, I mean, he's going to be back as well next season in the Premier League, which is another great result because he's already made top 16. Let's talk about San. Um, he's had a great start to the year. I mean, he had a great end to the year last year as well. He just seems to have carried that momentum through to 2014. Uh, didn't feature very strongly in WCS because obviously playing in Taiwan and, and a different league. But this year, his focus is very much on making that top 16 at the end of the year. Forget the fact that he wants to win WCS Europe. He wants to be at the World Finals at the end of the year. He's a complete killer. Um, already ranked fifth in the world right now in the World Championship Series ranking system. Um, Protoss versus Protoss, he's, he's so bloody good. Uh, against Zerg as well, we've seen his stats. He's incredible. And a lot of people look at Europe and say, MMA, MC, MVP, all these guys. But secretly, Sam's a challenger to win the whole thing. Absolutely. His stats right now, recent form, he's number one in the world right now, PVZ. He's number four in the world, PVP. That's terrifying. He's a killer. He's a killer. It's terrifying for the rest of the players in the group. Does it make him the outright favorite for this group? 
Uh, yes. Yeah, kind Just about. Him and MC really stand out. MC and San are very 50-50. They've traded games back and forth. But I'm definitely looking at San if he advances today to go far in this tournament. All right, thank you very much, Sean. Uh, let's take a quick break here on the analysis desk and hand you back to our commentary team because we're almost ready to rock and roll in number two game of Group D. MC's already waiting for the winner. Let's find out who advances. Is it Bling or is it San? We're on the Protoss versus Protoss road once again as San and Bling face off against one another to find out who's going to be playing against MC. Protoss versus Protoss is a road? It's, it's uh, I don't know, I mean, do you want to call it a cul-de-sac? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want to go with. <laughs> that was a horrible way to say it. <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, there's no real dead ends. Uh, the matchup keeps on evolving, keeps on going, but let's get into the map vetoes now. We've said it many, many a times, Todd, personal preferences here uh, for PvP, but interestingly enough in PvP during Premier and uh, Challenger, uh, during this season at least, Polar Knight hasn't been vetoed once, so people seem to like Polar Knight in PvP. It has not been vetoed a single time. Really? I thought yes. it was... Really? Okay. There well, you go. I guess... Polar Knight can be a little bit tricky to play on sometimes because there are like a lot of proxy. Come on. What is he doing? Take the veto seriously, Blaine. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Alter Zim and Daedalus, the top two vetoes, I would say, in PvP, just because Awkward is the word that could best describe mirror matches on these maps. Then I, I guess Daedalus, uh, from top Korean players, has been vetoed less than it would be from uh, European. But look at this. As I say, that Get rid of it. both of these maps. And usually we, I guess yesterday we saw actually a veto on Frost in PvP, which kind of surprised me, but usually we will see uh, Heavy Rain sometime vetoed here, unless you like Blink, which a lot of Protosses do. Uh, Yonsu vetoed, that's a little bit surprising. Uh, Habitation, I could see Habitation being being vetoed here, maybe that, either that or Polar Knight. Usually Heavy Rain and Frost, and Yonsu I feel are maybe the three most played. Uh, personally, I'm not a big fan of Polar, but then again, it really comes down to personal preference. Heavy Rain was vetoed here, so this might tell us a little bit about how somebody, I think it was Blink who vetoed it, might be reluctant to go into some kind of Blink versus Blink play versus his opponent. Mm -hmm. Then again, if, you, if you're not going to play Blink versus Blink when your nickname is Blink, there is not much you're going to yeah. want to be aiming for. Habitation first, Frost <laughs> second. Frost is almost always second, by the way, in those PvPs. But yeah. yeah, Habitation being first here, yeah, that's going to be interesting because it's it's an unusual map. We've seen a lot of non-standard stuff on this map. I don't expect I don't expect a proxy as much as one of them could go for some kind of uh, mothership core rush. Uh, I don't think it's going to be as good if somebody does it, just because by now it's been a lot more figured out and uh, everybody's quite good against it. Well. Bling is, we, me and Sean have already spoken about it, Bling is one of the most stereotypical, like, go-to, like, names that you would have for an English player. <laughs> I thought you were going to say handsome it's, and well, I mean, amazing human being. To be fair, to be fair to the guy, he is the one of the coolest looking pro gamers I have ever seen. This guy does not really look like, he looks like a rock star, man. He is We're right lucky there. to have him in our community, man. Yeah, we are. He's, he's a cool dude. As, and he, as he's lucky to be playing StarCraft, because... I think his life would be pretty sad without it. I think he was on be, Halo before, right? Would be ours. Yeah. Uh, but again, the stats for him, very, very heavy in favor of Protoss versus Protoss across the WCS system. But then we come to San, who, despite his Protoss versus Protoss stats in WCS not looking as amazing, all of those have been against super high caliber players. And it even includes uh, the wins and losses that he had during his uh, entire tournament championship over at ASOS ROG. Uh, it's really his versus Zerg that's the scary yeah. part of all of this. What's amazing about San is that ever since he's moved to Taiwan, and I'm pretty sure he has a harder time playing on the Korean server with uh, no delay, he's still been delivering results in a lot of tournaments. He's finally won a major title, and he's been doing very well overall. Uh, he did beat, uh, I believe it was MC in the in Katowice, in the World Championship. Mm -hmm. So uh, he's been he's been doing pretty well for himself. Yeah, and uh, indeed, our first map will be Habitation Station between these two players. Bling, during the round of 32, looked good against Protoss. We saw him uh, doing well there to advance on in first place. His mom was very, very happy with that. We found out in the interview that she certainly was, as was his whole family. Uh, and now he is here. He is here against San, representing your Flash Wolves. And 
I'm looking forward to this because Sans PvP has stood the test of time. It's very, very strong. He won an entire championship off it, basically, uh, defeating Deer. Oh, his PvP helped as well. It did, it did. Yeah, you're right. Beating life in there uh, with 3 and 0. But yeah, in, the, in, in Katowice, uh, he actually he beats MC, but then he lost to Hero, the man who was on fire at the time. It was 3 1. <laughs> <laughs> That's for me, right? I, hope I think it is. so. I think so. Probably. Brotos love, man. Brotos love. <laughs> All right. Well, sorry, you were saying about uh, his run. Um... Yeah, he had a good run, even though he lost to Hero. Obviously, one of the finalists. It was one in three. And uh, remember, he actually kind of struggled in that series, only winning with the one proxy. But here, going up against Bling, I definitely think that San is the favorite. All right. So now we have our PvP on the way for series number two of the day. And we have up to the top right-hand corner our red Protoss. He's pretty much a rock star, guys. Representing Team Dignitas, it is Bling. And up to the top left-hand corner, currently the highest-ranked European participant in the WCS system. Representing your Flash Wolves, it is San. Yes. Shout out to all the esports mom. Yep. Your mom included Tina Carroll. Thank you, thank you, Todd. She's a very nice person. <laughs> she sent me a nice uh, photo for my birthday on Twitter. Did she? Yeah. Oh. And Blink's mother, of course, big Twitter user, always supporting him. I think that's amazing. I wish my mom was on Twitter and supporting me. Do you? Oh, I'm only casting, though. There's not much to support. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I think it's really cool that. Uh, their family follow them so so closely. Yeah, it's good to say that we have supportive moms in England. They really like what we do, <laughs> which is really cool. Uh, as you can see, the New Age pylons, as you were mentioning before, right behind those mineral lines, keeping those gates back there. Uh, but let's come back to San briefly, because San right now in, in WCS, he is really, really on fire. He's already yeah. accrued himself 1,600 points, which compared to almost every other player in the world right now is amazing after having 750 points from the victory uh, over Asus Haruji. We had uh, an about 20 seconds quicker gateway by San here. I think oh. this is going to be the new build. This is the new build. This is the Zest build. You go for a quicker gateway, I think it's 11. Sadly, I was very focused on talking about the esports mom, so <laughs> I didn't pay fair close play, attention, play. but look. One pylon, he throws down the cybernetic score, he does 3 plus 3. Look, he's, he has only 9 probes on the minerals. He's gonna have so much gas, and you go for a super fast target. This is a very, very strong build in this map, on this map in particular. And as much as players don't like to play Phoenixes versus Phoenixes, if you do this build and your opponent does a standard opener like Blink did and goes into his target, I, I'm tempted to say he already lost. He's gonna be at such a deficit. So this is the new build, and I'm so damn excited, man, because... Well, as I say that, he actually starts a very quick Mothership core. That does not mean he's not going to go for mm. his targets. But well, the thing is now, Blink's sending out that probe, so does he identify oh. this? Oh, but he won't see a whole lot yeah, if that actually, Mothership core gets in position. Blink is the one who ah. ends up starting a target before, so I guess this is not a new build after all. As much as uh, the, the gateway being made earlier and uh, all the quick, the two quick to gases are going to give him a little bit more gas early on. So things Sand lined has up changed up. Yeah, he's yeah. changed up his play. I really think that if, seriously, if he had gone for a very quick Stargate here and against the Stargate of Bling, you would have had a lot more gas. How do you lose Phoenix versus Phoenix? You just can't. But at the same time, if he had have gone for the super quick Stargate, then the Mothership Call wouldn't have been out because he wouldn't have had the gas and the probe would have seen it, right? So he could have reacted. Yeah, but it doesn't matter to. if your opponent sees it. Like, you cannot go for Stargate later than your opponent and with less gas. Well, and then you just have to do something else to Yeah, but it. that's fine. Because okay. then you have air control and all that. So in this case, Bling goes for an Oracle, which... I think San wants to go for a pressure here. Yeah. He's added two extra gateways. Ooh. And look, he sneaked a pro... Oh, this is just going to be seen. He proxies a pylon when the Stalker was in range. So Blink should know that there might be some aggression coming. I'm actually surprised. He doesn't have uh, a second Stalker queued up. Oh, he's going to go for a Nexus? Oh my god, no. Uh-oh. This is just not lining up at all. I, I think don't think he realizes fully. Like, because he was No, no, he changes his mind. Yeah, he had okay. a probe on the, the expansion. I think he realized now for sure this is going to be aggression. But there was a delay on it. There certainly was. Yeah. There's going to be quite a lot of units coming out here from San very, very quickly. Opening this series with oh, a bang. San, San knows that the, the Oracle is on its way, so he's going to get two Stalkers back at home. Remember, San has no tech with this. He's on purely 
three gateways and stalkers. And Bling's going into a void right now, feeling a little bit of the pressure. But after seeing those two stalkers back at home, he can feel a bit more relaxed knowing that he had to force that to warp in. But at the same time, he still doesn't have the production to match his opponent at all. That one stalker is going to fall without any control whatsoever. And uh, that's not a good position. But at the same time, he did kill off a few probes back at home. Oh, first the Mothership Core with 80, 90 energy now is uh, sent back to the mineral line of Bling. The Void Ray is going to come down on the three stalkers. There is more stalkers coming in. It's going to fall. It is going to fall. It only got one Stalker in total. That Mothership Core might fall before even Photon Overcharge. Ooh, he's keeping it alive. He does have energy now for Photon Overcharge, and he will use it instantly. Oh, wow. That was close. And Blink, actually, he's ahead on Walkers right now. So he's used the Photon Overcharge. The thing is, he needs to get enough units to make sure he can hold against that wave, that which he's going to attack once the Photon Overcharge disappears. I'm not sure he's going to be able to, uh, because San is on 15 probes, and he's actually going to be sting out probes. So as much as he's going to commit to this attack, he's still going for a little bit more economy in the same time. And Bling, is, I think he should add some Zealot so that his gateways reload faster and he might have to pull probes as well. And that Mothership Core with very low hit points, not even going to help much. Look at the army supply, yeah. 24 against 16. Without a photon overcharge, there is only so much that Void Ray can do. Yeah, he absolutely needs to somehow keep that Void Ray alive and have it as efficient as possible. Warps in some Zealots so they can try and tank at the front here, but the Photon Overcharge is now dissipated. He's going to poke forwards and try and kill off Pylons, and now Bling is supply blocked. Time warp. Big, big difference here. The Mothership Core ends up falling. That Void Ray is going to be next to Focus Fire Bring Down, and all of the probes trying to get through with that Time Warp to help out and aid this defense. But San just has overwhelming numbers. GG for game number one. And a fiery start here to this best of three. Yeah. Uh, as much as I would like to be able to say that this is a build order win with the three gateways against the Stargate, I think the execution from Bling was just not good enough. Mm. Uh, with the Stargate, he made his gateway super late. I think he, he was maybe thinking about going for Nexus. That Mothership Core of Sand did way too much damage. On this map, you should always be able to... Especially he scouted. Did he not see that the Mothership Core was being made and headed towards his base? He thought it was more important to move out and look for proxies rather than stay at home with the Stalker and defend the mineral line, which doesn't make too much sense. So, uh, not the best start here by Bling. All right, well, he's going to have to book up his ideas if he's looking to advance on in this first series. But of course, uh, you don't get eliminated instantly if he loses the first series. You go down to that lower bracket uh, in this group and then would be playing against Nurchio. But we already mentioned before, I, I do feel strongly that PvP is Blink's best chance to advance from this group. Um, we saw him do well in the round of 32. But you've got to play against someone like San and MC in PvP. Are you kidding? These guys are murderers in this matchup. Yeah, they're pretty good. Uh, the thing is, they are not invincible. We saw at uh, Seed Story Cup that MC lost against Harstam. So going into this kind of a match with the right mindset, with some well-prepared build orders, there is, it's still, it's always possible to beat these guys. We've seen actually foreigners doing pretty well overall in this tournament uh, against Koreans, which does not happen every single time. So definitely possible here still for Bling, but he's going to have to execute his build a lot better than this. Nice. I really feel like this was a little bit chaotic. That's, that Mothership Core flying into his middle line threw him off his game completely. He was across the map with his stalker. He had to go back. He lost a bunch of probes here and there. Uh, he had to commit a lot to the Oracle. He did a lot of damage with the Oracle. After the Oracle finished its, its job, uh, he was Bling was on 20 probes against 14, which is a great win. The thing is, yeah. if you die in the next... Well, after that minute where the Photon of a Charge expires, uh, it's going to be trouble. All right, we're going to get into this game in just a second. It was an interesting... Uh Angle that Bling actually plays on. Look at the screen angle compared to how he's sat. You don't oftentimes see that. <laughs> but there you go. Uh, Bling is an interesting one, that's for sure. And now, just waiting to get onto Frost for our second game here. So I think that this gives Bling a little bit more breathing room here in PvP, uh, a map like Frost, compared to Habitation Station. Habitation Station is always an aggressive PvP map. That I, yeah. Uh, and you know, it's funny because I said that uh, Mothership Core Rush is not good anymore because everybody just waits for it with Stalkers. But yeah. in this case, Bling really <laughs> did not respect uh, my prediction because uh, he moved out and that was just not, that just didn't work for him. All right, well, let's get into game number two now to find out if Bling can bring it back one to one or if Mr. San can take the 2 0 pretty quickly here. We all know San's PvP uh, can have those fiery sparks of aggression. 
But can Bling hold it off? Can Bling bring it to San? We'll find out. Spawn down to the bottom left-hand corner, we have our red Protoss representing Team Dignitas. It's Bling. And up to the top left-hand corner, our blue Protoss representing your Flash Wolves. It's San. I think if you look at these two side by side, they are the exact opposites of one another in real life. They are the exact opposites. I'm not sure what that means, and I'm not sure I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. It's funny and weird that you say that because they both look pretty focused and nervous, especially Bling. Yeah. He looked pretty nervous here, whereas San, San did not crack a single smile since he's been playing here. He's extremely focused. He's traveled a long way to come here. Uh, Taiwan is much further away than England. Yes, it is. To Germany. Yes, it is. I wonder how, how long does it take? Have you been to Taiwan, Todd? I've been to, to Asia, to China, and to Korea it's from uh, from France. Yeah, yeah, I guess it's about the same. It's, it's many, many hours of flights. Uh. Let's just say that. And usually not a direct flight either. So he's, he came yesterday. He's had some time to rest, to adjust to jet lag. And uh, San, he played pretty well that first game. Yep. His build completely threw me off. I really, th I really thought he was going to go for a quick target, but uh, what he did worked out for him in the end. He confused me and he confused his opponent as well. Uh, and unlike game number one, there aren't too many differences here in the build at all. Very, very similar. Gateway timing, yeah. uh, just uh, on a map like this, it's much harder to really get away with anything super, super aggressive because you just don't know where your opponent's spawning. So it gives you the comfort of mind as well to assume that you can just go for a normal build here uh, and play it out strong. And looks like Bling is going to be our only player scouting here after after they have 70 score, the Grubby Scout. That's what I call it. The Grubby Scout. Even though I played Grubby today on ladder and he scouted after a second guess. No. I don't care. It's still the Grubby Scout. <laughs> you don't get away from it. It is the Grubby Scout to death. <laughs> well, now we see not really a whole lot. 3-3 three, three in each of the gases here for Bling. So, tech, tech, tech. Yeah, this makes me curious. Uh, do we see Ooh. a sentry as first from either? From San? So maybe a quick expansion here. Could Sentry does not always mean a quicker expansion. It means that you're going to want to have an hallucination to scout with, and you're going to have force fields before to help and defend against any kind of rush. And uh, in this case, cool mean an expansion. And if it was an expansion from San, what I would be most curious about is what is the follow-up? Is it a Stargate? Is it a Robo? Always have to take a bit of a gamble because he's not going to have any information. Oh, and he didn't even see the sentry actually yeah. um, coming out, which is a little bit of a shame there for Bling. That means that he got out too early because usually even a stalker, you can see it and then get out and uh, not, not be killed with your probe. Twilight Council by Bling here mm -hmm. makes me wonder if uh, he's going to go for maybe a Dark Shrine, yeah, which uh, as much as since San is going to go for an expansion, he's going to be waiting for it and he could scale it with hallucination. Uh, if he doesn't get a detection on time, it's, he would be in an awkward position. But Bling, the trick for him is, uh, no, if he goes for DTs, not to take an expansion too late, because I don't think he's ever going to be able to kill Sen. And yeah, he's going to be a Dark Shrine. And that probe comes in, he's trying Whoa. to get some information, he sees the Twilight Council and he... Oh, did he see that? He saw it, he saw it. Oh, okay, he saw it. This is pretty wow. bad for Bling here, uh, to be spotted like this. I think he goes for the Nexus, so I, that's... It's not all bad, Yeah. At least. yeah. If, he, if Bling now had gone for like two or three additional gateways, he would be completely all in, and I'm pretty sure that Sand would be able to hold, knowing that there's the possibility that could come. So you see Sand is going for the Robo behind this. He's even gone as far as getting his own Twilight Council very, very quickly. Hmm. So this is actually uh, a little bit arrogant, I feel, in a way, to, to go for this this fast. Like, he feels that confident well, that he would be able to hold anything. Couldn't he go for his own Dark Shrine, assuming that his opponent yeah. doesn't really have, like... But he, he does have a Robo on the way, because Blink's covering all of his bases here. Yeah, he could. I'm actually wondering, since he hasn't started Blink, the thing is, San is going to have to add at least one more gateway. He could stay on two gateways for a little bit. I guess he's going to spot that expansion, so from there he can decide. This might be why he hasn't started Blink. He's waiting to see with his hallucination, because he knew the, That's the hallucination. Good move. You see how quick this is. Yeah. Six minutes 30, you already have an hallucination to see everything your opponent uh, could do. And he sees that there, is a, there has been a cancel on the Dark Shrine, so. San knows everything he has to know. He throws <laughs> down the forge for some upgrades behind this, and uh, from there he's basically going to be able to go into a regular game, and you can choose if he goes into Charge, Archons, or Colossus, but already having the Twilight, I'd lean towards more Charge and uh, Archons. Yeah, he got the confirmation of the Robo, so there's no real need to do anything more with that uh, in that point. Uh, but 
with the Forge on the way, I do love it when uh, we see one player really seizing the game with the weapons upgrades. Because yeah. now, I mean, Bling's just going to have to play catch-up. There's really not a whole lot more. He's adding on Immortals, but as is San, those Immortals, if they want to walk over for any kind of aggression whatsoever, the, there's always going to be the reinforcing ones for San a whole lot quicker. So, And San, look at this, two Observers out already. Uh, just to keep eyes on everything that's going to be going on on the other side. Yeah, Bling is going to need his own 4 JSAP if he does not want to fall very far behind on upgrades. And uh, it's funny, I think Blink might, uh, might actually have walled off the, the back behind yeah. that pylon on the left hand side. He can can't he go get through? back there. You think? No, that pylon on the left hand side. Can he not go through there? I don't think Between so. Between the two mineral patches? I really don't think so. I think he, he, I think he would have tried to throw down the Dark Shrine back there. Um, Maybe okay. to uh, instead of where he put it, but it would have still been spotted anyway. Yeah, um, Sun, he has two observers near Blink's base. This surely this has to be a mistake. You don't need two. One would be enough. And uh, in this case, Sun, he's gonna let his mechanics pick. He's gonna make probes continuously. We see he's already on 46 against 39. He yes, he did have a lead early on, but uh, he's gonna want to look to extend that lead. Wouldn't be surprised if we see some kind of third base, maybe in somewhere in there. He's going to add a lot of gateways at once, and then he's going to keep on scaling with Salicination, and he's going to find a weak spot, a weak timing uh, where he could attack his opponent. Or weak. When I say a weak timing, obviously I mean a timing where his opponent will be weak to defend. And I like that move here. Going for the double immortal drop against no blink and no stargates. Uh, always going to be nice. This could do a lot of damage and uh, could bring blink Bling uh, back into his game. Yeah, it could. And we'll push this away with Fortune Overcharge. But also, likewise, Sam has added on his Warp Prism as well. So if he yeah. actually picks up, and if he went behind that mineral line in the main somehow, and just sat there where those units actually can't get to too easily at all, that could be dangerous here for Bling. Yeah, we're going to have El Clasico happening in this game. Colossus versus Charge Lot Archon. And that's going to be interesting to see how Sam deals with it. Because he's going to be for Sam to make something happen. When you play Colossus, uh, a lot of the time, it's going to be super generic. You're going to wait until you have three, then oh. you choose if you go for a strong timing or if you take a third, but you're going to play very defensively a lot of the time. He's looking for the feedback on that Mothership call. He oh. is absolutely He's gonna looking get for it. that. Yeah, if he brings that in and denies it, then like, how do you defend against this? And he gets it! This is a great move by Sam. Now he can bring those Immortals in. There's no opportunity for Photon Overcharge to defend. Wow. What a sick move. Uh. These Immortals looking to get some kills as well. Uh, he's going to target the probes. This is pretty nice here by Bling. Is to be careful not to lose too many hit points on that war prism. And with Storm and Lens on the way and some Colossus, I think Blink should be fine if San was to attack. The thing is, those Immortals, how, does he, how is he ever going to deal with them? Uh, he's trying to catch some Stalkers where he can here. I think he really wants to get back to that walled off mineral line, but aside from that, there's really not too much room. Blink's keeping yeah. on top of things. Uh, getting a quicker third is very, very common in this situation for the player that's playing with Immortals and Charge Lot Archons. So. For San, it's now normal to be getting that third quicker, but he's getting charged now. He's, he has plus two earlier. If he adds on a lot of gateways just before the third finishes and does something like a War Prism, Bling, uh, I mean a War Prism drop uh, with some Zealots and some reinforcements, Bling is going to be in a lot of trouble to, to basically defend against that. And likewise, like, with these compositions, time warps for San are exceedingly important once the engagement comes along, right? I mean, if he could snipe out Mothership Calls again later on, uh, yeah. then he has time warps whilst his opponent doesn't. That's a catastrophe for Bling in an engagement where he's the Colossus player against someone who is this Archon Immortal player. So, certainly going to have to pay attention to it. Most players have played this very, very well, I have to say. Uh, I'm a big fan of those games where you just sit back, macro, and you try and do some damage here and there without committing too much. And uh, both of them have done a really good job so far. The thing is, the, the Archon counts is quite scary for uh, San, but I don't feel like he has enough Immortals to possibly break Blink. Even though he has a slight supply lead right now, if he was to attack and Blink, Blink is already in a good position to time warp and defend, he's gonna do okay. But, oh, the Warp Prism though could be quite scary if he was to drop the Immortals behind the Colossus. He's gonna certainly try. Ooh, yeah, no. not, there is no way in this position. It, it's for Blink to move out, and then uh, I think San might try and force a move out from Bling. Look, he, he goes towards the third. Oh, a very nice counter-attack here by Bling. Um, but there is only still one time warp available on that Mothership Core for San, so uh, he has to make that one time warp count if he wants to actually kill off this army. He well, does go down here for Bling to try and push a lot of this away. He pushes him into a choke oh, point. Oh, the Mothership Core oh, of San was San. too far. And Where are you going? It was too far behind to time warp to hold that army in place, and then oh. he gets hit back and kill. This is big here. 
Bling having defended that yeah. is going to have a great advantage. He's about to get a Force Colossus. If he hits a timing before there is a lot of Tempest, which right now the first target is about to finish for San here. I think Bling is going to be in a great position here. He's playing this out great. San, uh, although he did make that mistake, he can't. He started that Mothership Core instantaneously as it died, realizing that was a massive, massive mistake here. Uh, and now he really needs yeah. out if he wants to take uh, any engagement. Bling is about to get uh, War Prism dropped in his main. It's going to be tough for him to split his army and defend well against that. And instead of dropping down a lot of gateways and hitting a timing, it looks like he's want to, he wants to take Gazes on his third base. And look! San is going to go in there. He doesn't have a Mothership Core in a recall, by the way. Oh, Bling is way out of position for both of these attacks. Not only the Zealots in the main base, but also the third base getting hit pretty hard. That being said, though, he only leaves Zealots there. And actually, he's not going to be able to clean that up before he actually gets that Nexus. A good pick up there yeah. for San. Actually, this could backfire here for San. If Bling counters attack here, I think he, this army is so damn scary. Against no air units, no anti losses. 99 army supply for Bling, 79 for Sun. Of course we see everything and Bling might not be able to be sure of where he's at exactly right now. But I think if he knew, he definitely hit that third base of Sun right now. Take it out. Uh, maybe take out a lot of props as well with it. Does he have the win balls the game. though? Does he have the balls he's moving to go? Out. Yeah, he does. Oh, he's, yes. he's bling, man, of course. Of course he has the balls. And also his third base got denied once again anyway, so you need to do something with this. Bling realizes that. Bling knows that. Oh, he's, he's gonna, gonna try and take the engagement in he's the middle recall, of the map. Maybe. He has to get out of there. Recall or time warp, but then if he time warp, he could get chased down. Good. Oh, Sanic, I don't think he can fight this. Those Zealots actually pin up against those Immortals. Oh my god. He has nothing to buffer for his Immortals. He has to get out of there. Few Zealots left alone. San is now... Uh, Big Warping in the main, by the way. Oh, okay. So this is this is really well played out by Bling. Oh, this Bling, I think he might played. be able to do it here. Yeah. There is a single Tempest out. A second one is on the way. I think Bling takes out the third base, all the probes. And <gasps> if he defends back at home against those Zealots, he's going to win the game. And he focuses down the Stargate, so he can't bring any more Tempests into play against these Colossi numbers that are now hitting this for the third base here for San, this this could go Bling's way. Bling has a fantastic opportunity right now to finish game number two. He doesn't have to care about the harassment at home. Just go for the kill. Go for the throne. Yeah, he might be a little bit worried to attack behind this. He's killed Nexus and uh, some pylons here, but the probes escaped. And uh, San having two... No, he actually didn't get a second Tempest. He has only one. And the thing is, with the Archon positioning now for San in this army, the Immortals aren't as easily closed down yeah. by the Zealots. And the, the Zealots of Bling will die quickly off. So Both players have plus three. I'm, I'm actually surprised San is chasing down. Where did he find the confidence? And he goes for the time warp here to try to slow down those Immortals if he can. Micros back those Colossus as best he can do with those Archons tanking at the front. The Zealots, though, at the same time, do chew away through a lot of those Archons for Bling. The Colossi, though, they're just doing too yeah, much damage, dishing it out. GG! Bling is able to tie up the series one-to-one, -one, and he shows that his macro is able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with San. That was good. That was pretty good. Bling really, he really delivered that game. Uh, he tech to Colossus, and it's actually pretty hard to pull off Colossus against uh, Zealot Archon Immortal against a top Korean player like San, because they're gonna know every time they have to attack, every time they have to drop, when they have to base straight, and it's gonna be very, very hard to find or provoke mistakes out of them. But in this case, that one feedback on the on, on the Mothership Core yeah. meant that there not, not only wasn't going to be any time warp from San, uh, it was full energy, right? Yep. No no time warp uh, from San, and then no recall. Not full energy, it had time uh, for one yeah. time warp. Okay, yeah, he had a lot yeah. of energy. I actually sent off for a recall or a time warp. So yeah. in that case, attacking on the bottom right hand side, he sniped the base, and then even though there was the threat that he could counter attack, the, that, that Colossus army, it was the strong timing of Blink. He had to attack. If he waited, if he waited until there had been, say, like three. Tempest, oh, that would it's been a, bad a whole different story. Even two, even two makes a big difference. But he did a great job of harassing and even killing yeah, off the Stargate. I, I, I'm actually, that was good. That never happens. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it's very rare that I end up casting a PvP, and we cast a lot of PvP, where you see the Stargate actually get sniped out like that. That was very, very good. So we're going to get into game number three in a second. It's 1-1. One, one. We're going down to the wire in a lot of these series. Uh, two, to be precise. As Bling, <laughs> Bling plays almost as good as he looks. And he looks pretty good. <laughs> I, I have to agree. I have to agree. He does look pretty good. All right. So, game countdown now. Bling versus San. Bling is able to make the recovery. Is he able to take the whole series is the question. Polar Knight is our last map here in this Protoss versus Protoss. 
and we can get right on into it. As this guy, currently ranked fourth or fifth in the world right now in WCS, fourth. San, is looking to power on through. So, let's get right, get right on into it. Spawning up to the top as our red Protoss, representing Team Dignitas, it is Bling. Down to the south, our blue Protoss, representing your Flash Wolves, it is San. Remember that little game we play very often when there is a PvP, where you predict the tech path? Oh, yeah. And you are the one hyping Polar, by the way. You're like the one saying that this map never gets vetoed. It so, doesn't have PvP, man. So there, there you go, expert. What are we going to see here? Mm, Twilight Council from Bling versus Stargate oh. of San. Oh. Gate 10 by San. Gate 10. That's this, early. This could mean he goes, yeah, okay, he's not going to do gas 10 behind this. So it's not a very quick mothership core. I think it, this is a three gateway, uh, very, very strong attack that comes very early on. Yeah. And with which he's hoping to catch Bling off guard. If you go for something like something very greedy, with a very, like, say, a very quick Stargate, uh, a sentry plus a mothership core, mm -hmm. and then into a Stalker without having scouted. You're going to be caught off guard, but Bling, if he goes for the standard double gas, if he scouts, I would say, latest after his cybernetic score, and if he spots that this is what's going on, he's going to have a great chance at defending and being quite far ahead. This is very, very risky what San is doing here. He's going to come down to does Bling scout or not, and if he scouts and sees this coming, uh, does he react correctly? And Oh no, this is not going to be a big pressure. Second assimilator was made by San. So maybe still a Mothership Core Rush, or maybe that very quick target I talked about earlier. But usually with Gateway 11, it's a little bit better, so we'll see. Yeah. What do you think? Stargate? Hmm, it could be. I, oh, I, this map is pretty good. Yeah, I, that's why I was thinking about it before, but um, Bling is sending his probe in a very interesting yeah, direction. Yeah, I think this means proxy. Yeah. This kind of scares me, because... He's controlling that, and there we go. That could mean uh, somebody might get a huge build order lead without... Ha Either of them having taken any any kind of information, this is this is the risk that you expose yourself to when you go for something crazy like this. Oh, and it's the mothership core again yeah. here for San. So so similar build to habitation, but remember he pulled the probe off the gas when that happened before. Uh, he was on two plus two after starting the mothership core. In this case, he's staying on three plus three, and he started the stalker. So that's quite some gas spent. He's not gonna have all that much gas behind this. This could be a quick mothership core into something like Twilight DTs. Because look, now he has a hundred. Gas? No, he's going to start the pylon. Hmm. I'm really getting confused from this. And Bling, keeping his probe near this twilight that he has out on the map, I think this is going to be a dark shrine. And this could work out very, very well. If Sand does something like a Stargate, this is actually going to be a very, very late Stargate in this game. He and it's not exactly twilight. the most common of spawn, uh, like proxy positions, yeah. right? So What was your original prediction? It was then? Twilight for Bling, and then it was Stargate for San, which okay. was kind of shaping up, but then he <laughs> completely changed. So Half not, of it right. <laughs> not, not half. Damn. <laughs> I'm not going to give you that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so anyway, Mothership Core versus Mothership Core, the most oh. boring fight of all time, but he's going to get think, a probe. Yeah, I think San realizes what's up here. Yeah? You come into your opponent's base when he's supposed to have, like, a Blink Stalker, uh, not a Blink Stalker, a Stalker, a Mothership Core, and a third Pylon, possibly. And then he sees like there is no probes, or at least fewer probes than there would be usually. Yeah, it's like, where probably. is all your gas going, yeah. you know? Yeah. I think San is going to be able to realize what's up here. And I wouldn't be surprised if he starts a Robo very soon. Oh, he gets a third gateway with his Blink Tech. We saw yesterday Blink plus Observer doing very well against DT play. If San was to start a Robo now, I do think he will be uh, at great advantage. The thing is, look at that Dark Shrine production. And it's also a very good uh, move that are out by San to save that Mothership Core before it has to use any recall energy. Conserving yeah. that energy for later use is very, very important here in PvP. Okay, San is thinking Oracle right now. You see he's placed these stalkers in his middle line. And uh, I think in a moment when the Oracle does not come, but I guess he might have to stay in there. Uh, okay, what's in the sentry? He's going to have to okay. look very, very carefully at his ramp. I'm actually going to watch with sends you here for a moment. He sends a probe down there, maybe to scout for proxies. Or is he thinking expansion? If he's thinking expansion and a DT gets up there, even though he has observers uh, oh, on the way soon. Oh, is he oh, oh my god. Oh, what a sick it. reflex. That was Gets very a sentry well done. behind this and he's not going to take any damage. He's even going to spot that proxy pylon that's near his base. San has defended the DT attack. Now behind this, Bling is getting a quicker expansion. The thing is, San's going to have a 
Blink Stalkers behind this. He could start warping in a lot of Blink Stalkers <laughs> and go for an attack. And he's so confident about the defense that he just sends his probe that spotted the pylon down to start yeah. a Nexus. <laughs> right next to that Dark Templar. The Observer's going to be out soon to kill it off or at least push it away. And he sees that now. He's looking to get the probe. Oh, he's going to get it. Sick consolation prize. <laughs> <laughs> Sandy's starting to proxy uh, some pylon near Blink Space. The thing is, started, starting that expansion means uh, he's less likely to go for aggression. Then again, we've seen Baby Knight yesterday really leaving only his cybernetic score and an observer back at home to defend against DDTs and attacking with a lot of Link Stalkers. So we could see something like that out of, out of sand again. But since he's gone for the expansion, his Stalker count is not really high enough right now to do anything. He's on two Stalkers only. Mm, and we're back to Blink's go-to of Warp Prism coming out to actually put on some harassment. So I guess he might try and sneak in a Dark Templar yeah. actually at the back or something. W what you do in this situation is you drop oh. one in the main you drop one DT in the main and you send one in the natural. And if your opponent has only one observer, he's going to lose a lot of probes. But San has two observer. San knows that this was a possibility and he's, got, he's getting ready. Yeah, that's really well played. And good, good, also good mindful play to actually spot that up to the top left so that he can kill it off. And having to rebuild a Twilight Council in this matchup is actually oh, really, really annoying. Oh, he did spot it. Yeah, but this observer is getting out of position here. Look at the War Prism. It's racing very fast toward the, the main of San. Oh, what? What? San has three observers. One wow. with his army and one in each base. Wow. Okay, what well, this is going to be really difficult for him to really do anything. Oh, co catch the sentry, but good micro here by him so far. And does lose one in the end and will lose a second. That's not actually yeah. a terrible trade. Even force the photon charge. Uh, the DT is going to go in the main. Blink might be able to save that. He, he sees that there is an observer. He's going to save it. Run away. Both of them are playing so well in this game. Tries to blink forward, but one stalker isn't going to bring a warp prism down anytime soon. But again, as I said before, he lost his twilight council up to the top left. Has to remake that. That's quite a bit of gas investment. Yeah. I think it might actually have been better to go for a robo bay in this situation, just because like his tech has completely been reset. Like he has to restart from point. scratch. Yeah. At a time, he maybe would have liked to add a templar archive. And Blink is taking his sweet time in adding those castles and his expansion. This is very very late. Look. Is he's he on 14 probes in the expansion. Do you reckon he could, like, if he's taken the gases so late, could he just push with, the, like, Immortals onto that natural? Since he hasn't added extra gateways, I don't think so. And I don't think it would mm. work, too, because uh, San is definitely going to have enough to deal with that, most likely. But I mean, the gas is so important in this yeah. matchup. Wow. Well. He's going to take them now. Okay. Maybe being a little bit thrown off his game by all that's happening, the harassments, and uh, there's actually a single stalker on the left-hand side of the map. Look how far nothing. ahead, though, he is with this upgrade. He's a whole weapon upgrade ahead, as well as a forge, almost. Yeah. Uh, so that's a big, big difference here. While San is just rocketing ahead in terms of tech, uh, he's ha he has a great setup. Bling has got to find an avenue to bring himself back into this. Yes, this time San is going to be the one going for the Robo Bay and uh, Colossus tech. And look at this. San starts plus two immediately before Bling even starts plus one. This is just... Such a great position that San is in right now. Drops the sneaky DT off into the natural and will kill off a few probes. Could evacuate out again. The warp prism's there to help on out. And should... Oh, tries to get another one, but in the end, there's not enough for Ante either there. So he tries to get another sneaky kill and uh, can jump out because he knows yeah. he's not going to lose that warp prism. San, I think San realized that he's ahead on walkers and actually not by many. And he's, uh, he's going to be ahead on tech, obviously. He has the plus two quicker. He's uh, on Colossus tech. Even though he's still making an Immortal, he's going to start a Colossus very, very soon. And he's playing it very safe. I really like the way he's playing this. You see, he's adding extra gateways before rushing a third. Rushing a third here would be stupid. It would be a very high risk, high reward situation, but more high risk, aka you throw away the game. Yeah. So uh, he's going to play it safe and add a lot of gateways. Make sure he's safe for now. And uh, it's pretty cool. And San understands his opponent's mindset right now because yeah. clearing those rocks out of the back, you just don't you don't just do that randomly. There's actually an observer on the way to that third base yeah. of San. He spotted it with the stalkers. He knows he knows what's going on. Um, this is the Robo Bay. So Bling, having seen, oh, does he see the second Robo? This is big. Ah. From there, San can decide: does he go himself into a second Robo or does he go into Tempest? Because this is going to be for Mass Colossus. Oh, okay, he gets out. And this is this is a good attempt. When you're behind in this kind of game, you can go for the... Oh, no, he's blocking his gas. Uh oh. The Aww. saturation is going to be really bad. If you look at the income he right needs... now, the gas income of both of them, even though they're on four gas each. He needs four on that gas right now, man. <laughs> it's weird. Maybe even does. more. Yeah, maybe even more. Maybe even five. Uh, that's kind of strange. That's not as efficient as it needs to be um, in this matchup. He took them late, and now he's hurting himself with that robo facility. But Ooh, that war prism on the left-hand side. 
What's it doing? Oh, it's gonna die. The blink is just too much for that. It will end up falling. Dark oh. Templar in it. Could have dropped that off, actually. Blink wasn't even looking, sadly, for him. Plus two started for Blink. Uh, as much as Blink did well on Frost, I really feel like this time he's really, really far behind. The only thing he has going for him is his Immortal counts, which is quite scary. Six to three. The thing is, Immortals are not always the most important units. And in this case, San is going to want to look to hit the timing. A very, very strong timing. A two Colossus timing, I believe. Uh, there's Chrono Boost going into the gateways of San. So it looks like he's just yeah. going to posture mass, for the attack. Mass Charge Lots Archon to add in front of for his two Colossi to do the job. Wait, and and he, uh, he has Thermal Lance over an opponent that doesn't. Yeah. That's big. That is Photon a big deal. He's going to help, but I don't know just how much. And uh, man, a Robo rocking this probe is making me really sad right now. Uh, the Colossi move forwards there for a second for San. And it's just really gauging what his opponent's up yeah. to here. 89 Army Super against 83. San is very hard for him to engage well here. He's actually being very patient about this. He's doing this very well, doing a lot of damage to the Nexus using the Time Warp. Exactly. I mean, he knows he can be patient because his Observer all this while has been keeping an eye on the Rubber Bay and he knows that Thermal Lance is still upgrading. Time Warp once again here to try and push all of this down. Whoa, Charge is there, but it doesn't really matter. As Blink overextended. Yeah, San now has just such a superior army at this point and Blink's army is entirely clumped up. Oh my god, he had to stay behind the Nexus until Thermal Lance finished. Look at the production tab. Plus two and Thermal Lance were so close to finishing. He should have Chrono Boosted only that, so I guess he... He had to get some more Colossi out as well. The thing is, San has Archons now. He's getting two extra ones. He has a lot of Zealots, and I think he's looking to close it up. Yeah, both of them lost their Mothership calls during all of this. No Time Warps, no Photon Overcharge available to anyone. But at the same time, there's just overwhelming numbers here for San, who tries to blink forwards with his Stalkers, getting on top of those Colossi where he can. He gets a second one as well there. The Immortals will be rendered useless as the probes try and come offline for the fight. But San here, reading this second, this third game really, really well. GG well played. San advances on to the winner's match. Bling even attacked his own pylon here at some point. I don't know if oh. you saw. That, uh, that was a misclick, I'm guessing. And uh, a little bit of a misread here. And that's going to cost him the game. I think, I do think he would have had a chance. Even though he was on no Archons, Photon Overcharge plus Time Warp really helped in those fights. And what happens in this situation is you're going to want your opponents to attack into you in a bad position. So basically to be all grouped up for the for your Colossi to do the job. In this case, it was Blink who overextended, who moved out, who chased Sen outside of uh, of where he should have been fighting. And uh, because of that, he's going to pay the high price of uh, losing the series. Yeah, and uh, now Blink goes down to the lower bracket. So he ends up playing Nurcio next, while San advances on to play against MC. So we are guaranteed one extra Korean Protoss alongside Stardust in our round of eight. But which is it going to be? That's going to be a good PvP, man. Yeah, San versus MC is becoming uh, one of those uh, rivalries, I feel, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we see it quite a lot. They played the, they play each other here in the Intel Extreme Masters Colon. They played each other in Katowice. They played each other here again. And uh, remember MC won one, then San won one? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Who's going to win this one? Oh, it's going to be good. It is going to be good. I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking at liking my PvPs at the moment. Uh, so, unfortunately for Bling there, now he has to go and play against Nurcio down in that lower. And we saw how good Nurcio was against MC. He almost defeated him during that. So, that's going to be a tall order, I think, for Bling. Yes. It's, uh, it, I mean, he's shown good things versus Zerg in the past, and he has an unusual style, which I think against Nurture style could be pretty good. Mm? I'm not going to say any more. Uh, All right. You'll see. Okay. Well, guys, without further ado, let's hear from the winner advancing on. It is Sam. Congratulations. Uh, a good victory in the end. Uh, but it was a tougher game than maybe you thought? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> was, it, was it a tougher game than you thought? Uh, a harder game. Hard game, yeah. Uh, 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 어 뭐가 제일 힘들었는지 세 경기 중에 음, 두 번째 경기가 제일 힘들었고 제가 다 이긴 경기인 줄 알았는데 저 가지고 살짝 멘탈이 금이 갔어요. Uh, second game is really hard because I thought I'm almost win, but I lose, so it's hard game. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't think that was quite what the translation was because I think Sam was to argue. But um, so before you played uh, Bling, did you have? A strategy that you knew that would beat him, or had you not really studied him? Bling 선수를 하기 전에 뭐 전략 같은 거 짜는 거 있는지, 블링 선수에 대해서 아는 게뭐 있었는지. 어그 저번에 한거 VOD 몇개 챙겨보고 그리고 
그냥 레더 아이디도 그냥 뭐 하나 봤는데 바코드 쓰는 것 같아서 그거는 몰랐어. I just watch it BOD before his game and watch it his account, but uh, I think he using barcode ID, so yeah, it's not good. Okay. Um, why why did you come to WCS Europe? Was it because you saw that there were easy players to beat like MC? 왜 유럽 선택해서 왔는지 어, 나 같은 선수랑 하고 싶었는지 <웃음> 그냥 대만에 사니까 일단 선택지가 유럽 아니면 미국인데 딱 보기에 유럽이 더 쉬운 것 같아서 선택했는데 <웃음> 네 지금은 좀 비싼 것 같아요. Um, he living Taiwan, so he can choose Europe or America, and he thought Europe is more easy, but he think now. Not, not easy than America. It's the same, Europe and America, same level. Okay. Uh, well, very best of luck to you and uh, good luck in the next round. You've got to play this man. Uh, have you got any, any words for MC for the next game? I'm going to go to the next round. 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 I'm going to go to the next uh, I thought MC English is well, but I think now he is not good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this may be the weirdest inception kind of uh, conversation I've ever had, where the translator is actually going to be playing the winner of our last game in our next match. So don't go too far away as these two go head-to-head -head in the winner's game in Group D. We'll be right back.